Hello. So in this session, I kind of going to just be musing for a bit, just talking about um, some of the situations I find fellow sons and mystics in, um, which saddens me to a certain degree, but I'm not super emotional. So that looks how it looks. But um, something that I teach on is understanding the difference between body, soul and spirit and understanding that our soul is in my opinion, the most important aspect as far as working on ourselves, because it kind of acts as the lens for the projector. In that the quality of the soul determines the quality of the picture presented in the 3D or natural world. That everything we see is a hologram, it's a projection, and our souls decide how clear that picture is coming in from our spirits. Um, so I find working on the soul to be the most important <laughs> um, as far as what leads to growth. Right. So. And that goes in functioning in the temple. Y'all may hear me talk about outer court, inner court, uh, innermost court. I talk about that stuff in my book as well. If you just want to read it, it's fullness, guide to sonship and mysticism available on uh Kindle, Amazon, and Barnes and Noble. But understanding those different aspects. So we have the innermost court or the Holy of Holies, which is the spirit. We have the inner court or, or just the holies, which is the soul. And then we have the outer court, which is uh, the body in the natural world. Right? So the something that we kind of struggle to see on a regular basis is where people function from not just where other people function from but where we ourselves are functioning from when we're doing certain things that and the reason i'm bringing this topic up there are a lot of spiritual people that i know that i love that i've witnessed that are amazing spiritually but they're led by their soul they're led by even their body they're led from the outer court and it causes confusion because typically what you would like to say is this person is a spiritual prodigy which means that the things that are coming from them are god like it's god that's that's what we would like but sadly no um sadly no and this is why i teach on discerning of spirits the way that i do using your discernment to know in the moment what's happening what is a person releasing from where are they coming from where especially if you're like talking about the prophetic but i don't ever believe in cutting off your discernment right so let's say you have someone prophesying and they accurately they tell you your name they tell you your address they tell you the structure of your house so you know they're seeing People assume it's God. Some people can just train the gift to see. Doesn't even require God. But let's just say in that moment, it's God speaking through them. And they begin to pour into your life and give you very specific advice. And you're feeling the goosebumps, the presence of God's all over you. And at one point, the person's soul kicks in. And they say, now, in order to activate this word, I need you to sow $70. If you're not paying attention, you would think that God just asked you for $70. In reality, that's that person's soul. They use their spirit <laughs> enough to get you to give them some money. So this is a category of soul of inner court, unhealthy inner court, or simply outer court uh in in charge where the spirit is serving either the soul or the spirit and soul are serving the body or you have the inner and innermost court serving the outer court instead of living from the innermost producing outward right so one of the things that exists one of the things that exists in the inner court um is filters 
Filters are things that we learn, they're preconceived notions, because the soul itself in the astral realm is all about information. It's where information is stored. So, this is the place where all the things that you've picked up from your experiences are stored. So, filters are the things that you've decided about reality. And it doesn't matter where they came from. Um, some people see it as, oh, the filters are there to protect me. No, filters warp reality. They warp the truth. They keep you in denial of what's actually happening, what's actually true. They come, typically they come from things that we got from tradition and religion, where someone told us something, we were taught something, we were trained a, cer a certain way, we were raised a certain way, and that led to the way that we experience reality. As in, we have men that quietly suffer in, let's just say, uh, physical violence in relationships, and they don't talk about it. Because when they were growing up, they were told, men don't hit women, you a boy, you can take it, men don't cry. So they're quietly suffering because of things they were taught when they were little that they didn't even realize were warping reality to realize, hey, you're in abuse. Where you have uh, little boys getting molested by women, but they don't think it was a bad thing because they were taught when they were a kid that, hey, you're supposed to go after women. That's a good thing. So they didn't realize that they were victims. Or you have, let's just say, something a little bit less dark. You have uh, ministry leaders who believe that women are less than, so they teach that women can't be pastors. So should God ever speak through them and say, hey, that woman over there is meant to be a leader in ministry, you know. They'll never say it the way God told them to say it. They might tell her she's meant to help. They might tell her she's going to be beneficial. God loves her spirit. God's going to do great things with her. But if he doesn't believe women should teach or preach, then psh, it's not coming out of his mouth. He'll say everything but it. So that's an example of filters. And... That's why I mean when I say it can be a spirit that's being someone's spirit that is being led by their soul with their filters being filter led or simply being outer court led. So what's the difference? So the filters are subconscious. They trigger in a moment they trigger and you don't even realize what happened. For instance, people. This is something I've noticed in studying people for as long as I have is that people who are heavy on respect tend to suffer from anger issues. Well, what does that mean? Well, it's people who demand respect. I respect you, you respect me. They're easy to offend. Therefore, they're always upset. They're easily triggered because they have more things that are deep issues to them because respect is heavy. They take anything, they take a, a, what, more things than other people as disrespect. So it's a lot more personal for them. So they find themselves in a lot more blow up situations because more things than usual are personal. So where most people would say, ah, it's not that deep for a person who's big on respect. They're like, no, I can't let that slide. They disrespected me now. A whole situation erupts. And it's like, whoa. It was just over that little... No, it's the principle. That is disrespect. You don't... You know, that's a filter in action. That's a trigger that they've built up. Not saying respect is a bad thing. So nothing's wrong with respect. But that's an example of a filter slash trigger that... Many people walk in that should they feel disrespected, they lose all control of themselves, which is something I hate. I hate when people lose control of themselves. Um, my personal filter. <laughs> so imagine that a person who's using their spirit to power the wills of their filters, meaning that. As a theologian, 
someone who teaches, instead of sharing revelation purely from the spirit, you're sharing as much revelation as your spirit, as your soul will allow. Meaning that, let's say you're really into the Hebraic, but you really hate the Greeks. Well, that means anything that God has to say to you concerning the Greeks, you're either going to ignore or you're going to slander. You're going to butcher it. Because you have a filter up that says nothing good comes from those people. Same thing that happens. Um, this I, I was a victim of this one, which is ageism. Where because of my age, there were a lot of people who could have benefited from me who are now dead. Uh, because I was too young to help them. That they'd rather get the older person to help them rather than the person who knew what they were doing. Where uh, when I was first starting out in ministry, there were adults, people way older than me. Like three, four times my age that were getting in the situation, you know. I never had any issues, but leadership respected them just because they were older. <laughs> Led to a lot of chaos. Now, I was never in that chaos, but that's a thing where it's the older you are, the more respect you should get. I believe in that, but I also don't believe that the younger you are, the more disrespect you should receive. I believe we should respect each other, that we should love each other and value each other, regardless of all that silly stuff. But that may be a filter, which means it doesn't matter how much truth is coming out of your mouth. They, Someone might decide, hey, if you're too old, I don't want to hear you. The same way someone could say, hey, if you're younger than a certain number, I don't want to hear anything you got. You need to shut up and listen. I don't want to. Hey, that's the problem. Y'all young people just won't stop talking. I think y'all know everything. You'll miss all the wonderful things coming from people when you write them off for silly things like that. Um, easy one is race. That's really the story of William Seymour, that uh, Charles Fox Parham's uh, and the other racists at that school hated the fact <laughs> that the presence and power of God, the baptism of the spirit, landed on the Negro they stuck outside. So they shipped him off to California to get away from them. Now they say that they pitched together to do it. No, they, they it was racism. The Azusa Street Revival was never supposed to exist as a part of a building. It was meant to be the entire city of Houston. So we ended up with a few great years in one building that was supposed to be an entire city that would still be lasting the day. But an ism got in the way. Because... The belief of the individual and the people that he was training was you darkies don't move with God. God don't like y'all that much. The hierarchy of God is uh, white males, white women, black men, and then uh, black women. Like that, it's just what it is. That's who God talks to in order. That's who God get. And, and then God disrespected it because God's not racist. <laughs> uh, there's people who something as simple as gender there's pentecostals who don't believe in women preachers when a woman is their founder where mariah woodworth edder is like the founder of pentecostalism that before there was a charles fox parham to really teach on the baptism of the spirit and the uh evidence by speaking in tongues there was a mariah woodworth edder laying hands on people and it felt like electricity would go through their body and all types of healings and all types of stuff happened with that lady. <laughs> but they hate women. <laughs> it's like women are less than, women can't do this, women can't do that. But a woman is the founder of their denomination and she did all that stuff. Men can't have mustaches. Well, Charles Fox Parham, as racist as he was, he had a big mustache. Black people are less than, well, William Seymour, <laughs> who was the catalyst to Pentecost, was a black man with a beard. So it none of that, God didn't care about any of that stuff. Those are things that were embedded in the souls. Those were filters. So their spirit was only able to move insofar as their soul allowed. This is something that still happens today. Many people have experienced these things today. 
Now, when we talk about just simply functioning from the outer court, well, there there's no intimacy with God. That's someone who sees numbers everywhere and they just chase the numbers. They're always doing math, talking about, oh, I see one, 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 one. I see two, two, four, six. Uh, oh, I miss me and God wants me in Psalm chat. Hey, you're crazy. OK, it, it ain't that deep. God talks. <laughs> you don't have to be a diviner. Um, now, there's not not saying that there is no revelation in numbers, but it ain't that hard to talk to God. Uh you usually run into people who are only living under the religion. They're not thinking much farther past it. They're not really engaging God. Once you get into the inner court, even with filters, you start to enter into areas of confliction because you're at least encountering God to some extent. And there's powerful things that can happen in each realm. Like I said, I have a book on this stuff. I talk about this in other sessions. There's already a few sessions on this on Patreon. Um, where I talk about the different things and the different levels of the temple. And yeah, all of that's already on Patreon. But there's some people who simply use their spirituality, they use their soul and their spirit to serve their religion. They serve their uh, political affiliation, all of these outer court measures, or even some things. Now, sadly, there's some things that have nothing to do with the temple that people will surrender their body, soul, and spirit, just give their entire selves into, which is rough, right? I find that sad overall. Now, I'll tell you this. Be real with yourself. Pay attention to people's reaction concerning you. Let's just assume you're not as self-aware as you think you are. Let's say you think everyone likes when you come around. Let's back off. Let's, let's assume you can't see yourself well at all. Pay attention to your habits. Run, give yourself some surveys. The last few people who have irritated me, how did I respond? I don't want to hear the story. Just how did I respond? It's like, okay, either I did good or I failed. It's one or the other. Did I blow up or did I handle it calmly? Did I give them a little bit? Did I give them a lot? Did I give them none of it? Be authentic about it. Compare yourself, and this is a filter, this is a uh, a diet issue. If you're a person that watches TV, now I'm not anti-TV, I'm not anti-video game, I'm not anti-any of that stuff. Not anti-music, but what I will say is, I want you to take a moment and actually examine yourself. How much do you match what's on your TV, what's in your music, <laughs> what's in your video games if you match it even to a considerable uh, a considerable degree back away from it I'm like if you're just watching reality TV shows and you realize that you behave like a reality TV show character you need to back off from watching that cut your TV off because it's influencing your soul and the world needs you to be God to solve its problems <laughs> If you notice that you have violent tendencies because you listen to violent uh, violent music, hey, cut it off. You'll be fine. You will live without drill without drill music. You'll you'll live. I promise. Not saying you can't enjoy secular music or you can't enjoy the type of music you listen to, but once you start to behave, once you start to notice your energy has changed to match that, you will only attract that. And that's an easy trap to get in because it's subtle and you won't notice that over the course of, let's just say, a year, two years, you've become what you've watched. That, well, I can honestly say, like, that's something that I've been living by, is that I practice self-awareness. I listen to what I want to listen to. I watch what I want to watch. 
but I pay attention. I'm like, wait a minute. I found myself getting annoyed a bit more easily than usual. Maybe I need to back off from listening to certain music. Just pay attention to yourself. And something I'll always propose is have a real conversation with God. Say, hey, not just, oh, God, forgive me. Who cares about you being forgiven? Sometimes this stuff ain't about you. Sometimes it's about the people that you interact with. Where you being forgiven is the least part of that situation. Some of y'all are walking around here hurting people. It's not about you being forgiven. I come to tell you a secret. You're already forgiven. Debt's already paid. Now let's just be better. So have real conversations with God. As in, what do I need to work on? Hey, show me my soul. Like, examine my soul for me. Father, show me what you see. Mom, show me what you see. Spend time with the seven spirits, not just receiving impartation so you could be a superhero, but actually allow them to tutor you, give you correction and instruction. Be like, all right, what do I need to work on? What should I do? What culture should I be living by? Regular baptisms of the spirit. See, it's possible and people who ain't never been won't get this. Because they're still functioning by theories. It's possible to go to heaven every day and not get delivered. Because heaven's not really meant to deliver you. It's not. <laughs> it, it's meant to do a lot, but deliver you, it's not really its thing. It's not meant to purify you. The lake of fire is supposed to purify you, not torture you, but purify you. Seek the baptism of fire as much as possible. The baptisms of the seven spirits, the baptisms of fire. Regular baptisms, regular purification. You are gold that needs to be refined. So reason I say have the conversation is so that you know what those issues are. So that once you, because the lake of fire will get rid of all that stuff. The baptisms of fire will get rid of all that stuff. Should you stay consistent with it. So it's not about getting rid of it. It's about you then recognizing what those issues are so that you don't repeat them. And it becomes easier for you to watch yourself. It's not enough just to know that you have a shortcoming. We got to get over ourselves. <laughs> It's about being led by your shortcomings. It's about avoiding accountability and things like that. Where instead of growing, we dismiss. It's like, no, we got to move past that. There's a world out here that needs us. Be like, hey, you're racist. No, I'm not. No, 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 no. Hey, maybe you are. How many people called you that? You might, you, you, you might be. <laughs> Or maybe you need to pick a different circle. Remember, I just did a video on the human radio effect. That's another test you can run. What are you constantly encountering? Whatever you're encountering the most of, you're attracting. Because the world can only send you what resonates as you. You are a living tuning fork. So no, nah, it's not everybody else's fault. You're literally attracting whatever it is that you're regularly encountering. So I don't want to spend too much time on that, but as sons, we got to be a bit more uh, aware of this kind of stuff. We got to be self-aware. We've got to be pure. I believe in purity. I believe in holiness. I don't believe in it in the same way as uh, some religions do. But... I believe we need to be clean. Not up into the standard of what we know isn't in the Bible. Because who cares? It's about what God's actual standard of living. Uh, it's not about being forgiven. You're already forgiven. This is all about intimacy and love. There's not a law that says that I can't do certain things. That's not how I live. 
I understand what God loves and doesn't love, what God likes and doesn't like, and I align myself to the likes because I actually love God. It's that simple for me. But I can only expect an individual to go as far as their intimacy. Where some people just don't want to go to hell and then you run into a teacher like me who tells you that uh, God's not try that hell isn't a bad place to, to be. <laughs> that at least the lake of fire isn't. Real hell is because you're not supposed to die, but that's another topic. That, yeah, <laughs> I'm not going to ramble on too long, but um, I guess that's it for this session. Um, remember, schooloftheempire.com. I have an upcoming 13-week mentorship course. Um, check out the website. I plan on covering a lot. If you love to be mentored, 13 weeks, live Q&A, going over different sessions. Um, it'll be every Sunday night. Um, starting in March. So, um, as well as I have a Patreon full of exclusive content. There's a lot of things I've, I've already taught on and talked about that some of y'all have been asking me to put on YouTube. It's on Patreon already. Um, I have my book, Fullness Guide to Sonship and Mysticism, available on Kindle, Amazon, and Barnes and & Noble, as well as the Discord server where all weirdos are welcome, as long as those weirdos aren't uh, troublemakers the server is a safe place for you to explore for you to learn for you to study for you to draw some conclusions for you to be yourself build family build connections with other mystics and sons all over the world if you're interested you're welcome uh that's it for this session y'all be blessed